Welcome to the first in a series of three brief presentations on roles and goals, the assessment and accountability process used by California Library Literacy Services. My name is Valerie Reinke, and through this series, I'll be guiding you through the process. If you've been working for Library Literacy Services for a while, then a lot of this is going to be familiar to you. Thanks for taking the time to review this material, and thank you for the part you've played so far in the shaping of the roles and goals process. If you're a new literacy staff member, welcome. And let me just say that the roles and goals process will be integral to the work you're doing, whatever your job title. The roles and goals process represents the underlying philosophy of California Library Literacy Services, or CLLS as I'll be calling it. And that philosophy is that everything we do as literacy staff and as volunteers revolves around what the learner wants to accomplish. If you're familiar with the statewide values of California Library Literacy Services, um, you can find them on our website, libraryliteracy.org. You know that learner-centeredness, a focus on the learner, is the crucial to the success of the entire program. Now that value states our interest is in helping learners meet their goals for improving their basic skills. And this is how we distinguish ourselves from other programs that take a classroom approach and work on a standard curriculum that one, is one size fits all. The adults we serve have not succeeded in that environment, so libraries have created an alternative instructional universe where we strive to determine what the learner wants to accomplish, and then we customize an instructional approach to meet these goals. A little history on the CLLS in terms of data collection. California Library Literacy Services was born in 1984 in 27 humble libraries. Today, literacy services can be found in over 100 library systems in California with over 800 literacy outlets like branch libraries and storefronts. Between 1984 and 1988, no statewide data was collected. Literacy services were so young that many were not thinking in terms of statewide impact. Then staff were hired at the state library, Carol, Al, Paul, they specifically to support literacy. And between 1988 and 2002, Participating libraries submitted data, demographics, and other statistics about their literacy programming. By that time, national changes were suggesting that we needed a new way to describe the impact we were having on our learners. The United Way had begun advocating for outcomes-based evaluation. And when the Institute for Museum and Library Services, the national agency representing public libraries in the United States, adopted outcomes as a tool for measuring the difference that libraries were making in people's lives, then the CLLS also moved in that direction. We already knew that we had many stories and anecdotes about the lives of our literacy services. We heard them every day as literacy coordinators. We knew we were changing lives, but we didn't have any data to back up this impact. Thus, the roles and goals process came into being, and it was followed in 2004 by the family survey to capture the outcomes of our families for literacy programs. So let's quickly distinguish between outputs and outcomes, give you a little overview here. If yours is like most literacy services, you know how many individuals participate in your program, how many hours of instruction you generate, how many brochures you produce, how many in-service workshops you present, and how many of people have attended them. In other words, you document and probably report to your library director on program outputs. Libraries love outputs. They love circulation numbers, numbers on visitors, number of reference questions answered, number of books cataloged, number of people who attend children's programming, etc. However, outputs in and of themselves have little value. They alone do not define success. They're important because they're intended to lead to a desired benefit for participants or for target populations. They're just a means to an end. It's the difference between saying 50 people attended your program on job search skills, that's an output, a typical library monthly report statistic, or 75% of the people who attended your workshop on job search skills created a resume within the following week and 25% found a job within a month of the workshop. Now, wow, that's the difference your workshop made, and that's the outcome. So a brief definition of outcome could be how lives have been changed, including skills, knowledge, and behavior. Outcomes are a good fit for literacy services, especially because learner-centeredness is one of our values. How do we define success? The ultimate measure of our success is the difference we've made in the lives of the learners we serve. All right, here's an example uh, showing you how outputs kind of shortchange the way you describe your program. This is the old-fashioned way. So he, what we've got here is got Al, the city councilman, over there on the left, and he bumps into Bob, the library literacy coordinator, asks him how things are going, they have a little conversation, but he asks about the literacy program. And Bob rattles off a series of numbers, and Al, even though he has a fake smile on his face, he can't help but suppress a little bit of a yawn. 
And those numbers are just a bit too abstract, he thinks to himself. 211 adults served, but we're a city of 50,000 people. Does this program make financial sense? You can see if we're stuck in the outputs paradigm, we do ourselves a disservice. Bob hasn't described the difference he's made in the lives of the 211 adults he's served. So that number 211 without any context looks weak, especially when he's talking to someone who's looking at the bottom line and probably hoping to save taxpayers some money. Let's fast forward to today and try an outcomes example. Here we are telling the story. We've got city councilwoman Patricia on the left, and she's talking with Anne, the literacy coordinator on the right. Now, Patricia asked what's going on in the literacy program, and Anne gives her a rundown on the goals that have been achieved by the learners she serves. 64% now read aloud to their children, 51% voted, 29% improved their job prospects, etc. Now we're talking the language of our city council person. She wants to know that this service is making a difference in the lives of her constituents, and outcomes describe just that. And because the outcomes are more descriptive of the actual activity of the literacy program and of the adults who need our service, it helps the councilwoman get a handle on what we're doing. Maybe she'll be able to describe it to someone else, thanks to those outcomes. Now, this is what just the outputs look in the context of California Library Literacy Services. This is the kind of information we could have shared with you about our services from 1988 to 2002. We had demographics on our learners and demographics on our volunteer tutors, and this graph shows the number of learners receiving instruction over the years. Now, as you can see, outputs are important in their own right. It's important for us to know how many adult learners we serve each year so we can analyze trends and changes. But the outputs don't tell the whole story. What we didn't capture during those years was the impact we were having on adult learners, the changes that were happening in their lives because of library literacy services. We just didn't have a process for describing that important facet of our program. Fast forward to, day, to today, where we also use outcomes to describe our success. Outcomes are the final product of the entire roles and goals process. So let me describe the process a bit before I show you what, the out, what our outcomes look like. And let me apologize in advance for this slide. It is very busy and it's giving me a migraine too. So bear with me. The process begins at the very top of the slide when the adult learner enters the program and literacy staff do an intake interview and determine why the adult has come to the library for reading help in the first place. What are his or her goals? This is critical because, as I've said, the learner's goals will set the course for his or her instruction. Now, meanwhile, tutors are being trained in focusing in on the adult learner's goals and teaching and creating instruction and, and a teaching plan that is customized to those learner's goals. The next step, the learner is matched with a tutor and to meet the learner's life skills needs, they work together over time. Periodically, the staff check in with the tutor-learner pair to make sure the two are actually working on the learner's goals and to provide support and materials and direction as needed. Twice a year, literacy staff report the goals set and goals met for every active adult learner in their local literacy services, and they report that to the California State Library. The State Library aggregates all the goal data from all 100 plus, plus library systems. Typically, this is data on over 11,000 different adult learners. From this, they generate outcomes. Now, once the statewide outcomes are published, local programs are able to use both the statewide aggregate and the data from just their library to describe the difference they're making in the community. This information can be shared with stakeholders, the media, library staff, and in doing so, you've turned your outcomes into a powerful publicity and recruitment tool. And by that time, we've come full cycle. You can see that the roles and goals process permeates almost every aspect of library literacy services. Intake, training, progress, state reports, promotions, public relations. Roles and goals is not just an add-on or an adjunct to what you do. It's central and integral to your literacy services. So now that you understand the roles and goals process, that cycle, there, these are the kind of things we're now able to say in order to describe the impact of the CLLS. Results from 2006-2007, the mid-year report, and these are actual results from that report, we had 11,255 adult learners reporting. We can now say in the role of lifelong learner, of those who set the goal, 81% got their own library card, 53% were able to search the internet, and 49% reported they could read for pleasure. In the role of family member, of those who set the goal, 66% took their children to a story time at the library. 
sixty four percent were able to share a book with their children and or other family members and fifty four percent were able to help their children with homework in the role of worker in the first six months of two thousand six two thousand seven and of those who set the goal forty six percent completed a job application thirty nine percent interviewed for a job and twenty six percent got a new job or a promotion finally in the role of community member of those who set the goal 50% were able to vote in the last six months. 45% passed the driver's test. 33% were able to volunteer. Now this is just a start in describing outcomes, but at least we have a way now to capture those anecdotes that were there all along. Now we're able to quantify them. Now I'll just quickly summarize the benefits of the roles and goals process for you. Hopefully most of these are self-evident. The roles and goals process helps you support your learners and tutors, your most precious resource. Because initially, during an intake interview, you're documenting the adult learner's reasons for coming to your library literacy services and then checking in with the pair periodically to make sure that those goals are being addressed. You keep the learner's needs in the spotlight. Remember, this is different from traditional schooling where a curriculum and workbooks drive the instruction, so this is going to feel different to your tutors. But with training and periodic meetings, you can keep the instruction focused on the learner's needs. Tutors need ideas for lesson planning and instruction, and roles and goals can help them in this area. Last year, we did an electronic survey of California Library Literacy Services staff about roles and goals. And here are some of the quotes that speak to the benefit of supporting your tutor-learner pair. Says one respondent, the roles and goals process makes the tutoring process more relevant for both the student and the tutor. It helps take tutoring out of an endless journey status and turns it into something more real with milestones that can be celebrated throughout the journey. And another respondent said, I think the tutors now understand that one-on-one -on -one tutoring really is different from teaching in the classroom in that curriculum has a concrete goal that is meaningful to the learner. From the intake, the learner has been encouraged to think about the concrete goals he or she has and the re reasons for joining the literacy program. Filling out the roles and goals form also serves as a reminder to both tutor and learner about the learner's goals and shows how far the learner has come in the last six months or so. As you can see, this is a tool for motivation and a way to build self-confidence, both for the learner and the tutor, based upon the successful achievement of goals. Benefit number two, the roles and goals process helps you better manage your literacy services. Let's take a look at that. Um, as I just help, mentioned, it helps you monitor the effectiveness, effectiveness of your tutor-learner pairs, but doing so, so also helps you. It's a little self-serving, I guess. It helps you boost learner retention, because if the instruction is relevant, the learner's needs are being met, he or she will not lose interest and will stay with the program. It also boosts tutor retention on the flip side. With the goals as a blueprint, the tutor has a lesson plan and can see progress being made and feels like they're making a difference. Again, they feel rewarded and feel like they're getting what they need out of the program too. Hopefully they'll stay longer. Roles and goals also helps you make decisions about the programming you do. It makes sense to analyze the goals you see coming in from your adult learners. For instance, if you see a large number of your learners have set the goal to vote, it's probably time for a voting workshop. If a large number of learners want to take the GED, maybe this is the time to build up your literacy collection to support that goal, or perhaps you invest in GED software or something like that. You get your cues from the roles and goals feedback. Now here's some more comments from the electronic survey. Quote, because of roles and goals, literacy staff is more in tune with the learner's goals and needs. This also helps with the matching process, and we use learner goal accomplishments in many of our reports outside of the CLLS, unquote. And another uh, user uses the process as a kind of exit interview. Quote, we try to talk to learners who leave the program to see what they've accomplished and why they're leaving the program. This lets us know if they're leaving the program because they've accomplished their goals and are ready for new challenges or because the program wasn't meeting their needs. The goals and goals process can give you the feedback you need so your entire program is customized, customized to the needs of your learn learner population. Finally, once aggregated, roles and goals data helps you make a case for the effectiveness of your services. Local and statewide data can be shared with your library director, the city council, county supervisors, funders, the media, in grant writing, and in public relations materials like brochures or posters. Or as one respondent said, quote, we can literally see what's happening in our program and show others what is happening because we have a huge poster of the roles and goals on our wall. We use sticky dots with students' initials to show what students have achieved in the program. 
We can show managers at the recovery house what their clients achieve, and this helps them do better recruitment. We can show the school district what parents achieve in the program we do with moms." Unquote. And another said, quote, we appreciate the results. Through our num though our numbers are relatively small, I love to be able to see the summary and be able to look at someone at eyeball to eyeball and say, these services make a difference, and here's how, and to feel confident to be able to share the wonderful anecdotal stories, but also to have this roles and goals perspective to share. It's another layer. All right, well, that's about it for part one of the roles and goals series. Now, for more background on the roles and goals process, do take a look at the other parts of this series. We've got part two, new directions for roles and goals, where we look at the latest iteration of the form and the instructions and talk about how input from the field has shaped these tools. And part three, reporting to the state library, which will take you through the reporting process so you can face it without fear or malice. This production today was made possible by the Library Services and Technology Act funding. That's from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services and administered in California by the state librarian. Thanks for tuning in.